Hi, I'm Elizabeth Hass. I'm here with Julie Pride. She's the administrator of the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District. And recently, we've had a few people in the community getting their second shots. And from what I hear, the clinics are still running smoothly. People are in and out within 20 minutes with that 15 minute waiting period to make sure that you don't have a reaction. Other than you, who can we thank for this gift to the community of such wonderfully run clinics? Well, certainly the huge Carl Clinic that is being, op well, the clinic that's being operated by Carl up at the old dress barn up by Coles, that is just running amazingly smoothly. Um, we have, of course, Public Health is also working with OSF, Christie Clinic, Illinois Fire Service Institute, SafeWorks, um, McKinley Health Center, retired nurses. We have all kinds of people helping us out over at the I Hotel, plus my you know huge staff here. Um, Francis Nelson or Promise Healthcare, they're also doing vaccinations. Um, the school districts, uh, 116 in Urbana and um, Unit 4 in Champaign, they just stood up massive clinics last week and got all of their employees vaccinated. So, I mean, we have a lot of people that are working to make sure that our community gets vaccinated as quickly as possible. The main question remains, when will you be calling my group? Can you update us on what group we're in right now? Sure. So we're still in 1B, which again is um, a very specific group of people. Um, we started out with 75 plus, then 65 plus with underlying health conditions, and then um, 65 plus. So basically if you're 65 and older, you are eligible for a vaccine no matter what. So you should be you know, contacting one of the numbers and, and getting a vaccine. Um, then everything else is based on employment. So um, we're working with manufacturing, the schools, um, they got, you know, they've all been working to get everyone vaccinated there. Um, and, and then there's just different groups within that, agricultural groups, um, grocery store um, employees who are working on the front line. So there's a lot, a lot of people within the 1B group. So um, we're, you were just trying to get everyone in that group finished and then then we'll be to 1C. And then that is a much bigger category because that is 16 and up with underlying health conditions. And that's gonna be a very, very large group plus a lot more critical infrastructure um, will be opened up at that time. But we, we're thinking maybe within three weeks, two to three weeks, we'll be ready for that. Um, but we have to wait, of course, for the state of Illinois to, to move into that um, as well. So I wish we had a better answer, but all I can tell you is we are rapidly vaccinating the community. So, um, you know, if you, you know someone who needs a vaccine, please help them if they are having difficulty getting in contact with someone to get vaccinated. While we're on the subject, let's talk about numbers right now. Where are we with hospitalizations, recoveries, and deaths? <clears throat> okay, so right now we are at um, 710 cases. So that's up a bit, 977 people in quarantine. We're still doing all the contact tracing and everything that we did before isolation and quarantine. So um, I mean, we want people to con continue to get tested, especially if you have been anywhere, you've been out, you know, you've been eaten in a restaurant, you've and went to a Super Bowl type of event, you know, anything like that, go ahead and keep testing because that is important. It helps us shut the down outbreaks before they get going really fast. Um, we have currently 24 Champaign County residents who are hospitalized. We've had 112 deaths. And right now we have um, in Champaign County a 4% positivity rate. Um, with the vaccinations, we're kind of excited about those because of our 172,760 people who are eligible, we have vaccinated, um, as of yesterday, 41,395 first doses and 7,690 people have been fully vaccinated. That means with both doses, and that's 4.45% of our our county. So we're really moving on that. Um, what what it does not show up in that is the probably, you know, anywhere between seven and 10,000 or so who work in our county, ha we have vaccinated, but they actually live in surrounding counties. 
So um, we know that other counties are really pushing the people to our county if they work here, so. And once somebody gets the second vaccine, how long before they're, I know you're not fully immunized from it, but how long before the efficacy takes effect? Uh, it, you're supposed to wait about um, three weeks to get full, to believe that you have full immunity from, from the vaccine. And once somebody has the second shot, I've heard, of course, it's anecdotal stories of people feeling it either it goes from a sore arm to pretty sick afterwards. But can you reiterate why, even though your body is fighting it, it's still so important to get this vaccine, no matter how you feel after one or two? Right. Uh, and it is important to go ahead and get it because that is your, that's your body's immune response. So, you know, you're building antibodies and you're, you're having an immune response. Some people have mild ones. Um, most of my colleagues had, had mild ones. Um, some have what is best described as a really bad case of flu that hits you fast, knocks you down and keeps you down for about anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. And that is, um, you know, that is, it's, it is normal. That's all I can say. It's, it is not, a con it's not something that is even reportable because it is considered a normal um, response to this vaccine. That makes it no less unpleasant, but um, then it's gone just as quickly as it, as it appeared. And last week, as you mentioned, teachers got a vaccine. I mean, I think over 700 teachers in the area were vaccinated, which is amazing. However, my question is, there's always a however with this on the flip side, that means that there are students under 16 who can't get the vaccine because we are still in testing mode and the families in this community are still unvaccinated. So if one side is vaccinated and parents and students aren't, is it safe to send our kids to school? Well, you know, with going back to school, it's safe to go back to school as long as the, the protocols can um, be followed. Um, and that means that we need to keep the kids at least six feet apart, keep the masks on and, you know, avoid things like um, any, basically avoiding any unmasked activities. They need to be far enough away if they're gonna be eating at school and that, that sort of thing. So there have been schools that have been in and have been safe. There are some where the kids can't stay um, far enough apart and, and that isn't working. So you, you need to be able to not only do the protocol that, that we have out there, um, because that's important whether there's vaccination or not, that has got to happen because we don't look for kids to be able to even be vaccinated or have the opportunity to be vaccinated until you know possibly summer or fall. But it's just like workplaces. If you um, keep people apart and you keep the masks on, you can absolutely do things safely. While we're on the subject of doing things with masks and staying apart, on weekends, I pass a lot of churches between my house and the grocery store or wherever I need to pick something up. There are a lot of church parking lots that are packed. Are we still in the 50 or less congregating or are we? is that just open season for the virus to spread among a singing community? Like, where are we in that process? Well, so the the guidance is still really, you know, it's it's 10 you know, indoor without mask, you know, is not good no matter what. But even, even indoor with churches, it's still said to be around, you know, 10. Um, but the, the thing is, First Amendment right to, you know, freedom of religion. We're not going to go in and, and go into a church or a temple or anything else. Um, but we do provide guidance. And we do know a lot of the places that are still having services, if they are having them in person, they are really spreading people out. Is it safe to sing? No, because especially if you're singing without mask on, that is not safe. Um, I just keep trying to encourage people to please keep doing what you know you need to do because the vaccines are here, that we're getting them out as fast as we can, and it's not worth um, it's not worth risking your life over um, going anywhere to, and possibly getting infected. So the the places that we know that are open and some you know are probably open and doing things in an unsafe way, but a lot of them have contacted us and they are having you know, everything masked, everything distanced, um, 
only, you know, music coming from a stage where there's, you know, one person singing and that type of thing. So they're really taking it seriously. Um, it, everybody needs to make their own assessment. If, if something is open and it's not safe based on what you know, you know, it's, it's really not worth, it's really not worth risking it. And can we throw in the new factor of the variant? We're still mm -hmm. studying the mutations of the virus and we're not sure if the vaccine is going to cover our immunization with that. So is the variant also prevalent in this community right now? Yeah, we've had quite a few cases now of the, the B117 um, variant. Um, right now it is believed that the vaccine does cover it. Um, but again, the, how viruses mutate is just going from person to person to person and they, they you know, keep changing. Um, and so we need to stop the transmission. It's, it's not just, we're, we're kind of fighting a, a, a race here to get people vaccinated and to get people, you know, to make sure people stay away from each other so it's not spreading before a variant emerges that will then be able to blow past the vaccine. That we do not want. Because then we will have to either do boosters or they'll have to redo the vaccine and we'll have to start over. Okay, so with the vaccines, when you go for your first one, you get a card and it tells you a date that you need to get your second vaccine. Mm -hmm. So kind of walk us through the process, remind us of what we do. We leave there with the first, <clears throat> excuse me, we leave there with the first vaccine in our arm and then we call or we go online or how do we set up the second one? Well, it depends on where you go. So if you go to the dress barn location, they're going to set you up an appointment at the same time. So you'll know when to come back and the time. With the ones that we've been having at the iHotel, you'll get a date where your vaccine is due. And then a week, around a week before you're due for your second one, we will reach out to you with the information that you gave us. So if you gave us a phone number, we'll call you. If you gave us an email, we'll send you an email. And that will have information on how, how and where to get um, signed up for the second vaccine. So it may be that we make you an appointment right then. It may be that um, you, we send you a link and you can click on it and, and choose from the appointments that are available. And once again, can you review the groups that are getting vaccinated now? Let's say you were working last week and you are still part of 1B. Can you sort of cover who that is? Sure. So um, let me get my little list out here. So I will actually go down the list so I won't miss anyone. So right now in 1B, so that's anyone, who, anyone who's, first of all, anyone 65 and up, anyone. Um, also first responders, so firefighters, law enforcement, uh, 911 dispatch, security personnel, school officers, um, EMS personnel, they were already vaccinated in 1A. Of course, any healthcare worker, um, corrections, uh, jails, jail officers, juvenile facility staff, workers providing in-person support and inmates, um, food and agricultural workers. So this means processing plants, uh, pro uh, veterinary health, livestock services, animal care, postal service workers, uh, manufacturing workers. And this is specifically industrial production of goods or services for distribution to retail, wholesale, or other manufacturers, um, grocery store workers, specifically baggers, cashiers, stockers, pickup and customer service, public transit workers. This includes flight crews, bus drivers, train conductors, uh, taxi drivers, paratransit drivers, in-person support and ride sharing services. So your Uber and Lyft and all of those. Education workers, and that's everyone from pre-K uh, daycare, pre-K, all the way up through um, 12th grade, teachers, principals, student support, student aides, daycare workers, um, anyone assisting in the school, and then shelters and adult daycare. So this is homeless shelters, women's shelters, adult day drop-in programs, sheltered workshops, psychosocial rehab. So it is a, you can see it is a very large group. And then then next comes 1C, and I can give you, if you're interested, a list of what that will be next. Okay, <laughs> everybody's interested in that one. Yes. So again, this will be more fine-tuned, but these are the larger categories. So that is going to be anyone 16 to 64 who have the following conditions, obesity, diabetes, pulmonary disease, heart conditions, including hypertension, 
kidney disease, cancer, their immune compromise, sickle cell, or pregnancy. So all of them will be um, prioritized. Then we have um, other essential workers, which will include transportation and logistics. So, um, you know, your uh, transport, uh, truck driving, that type of thing, logistics that work with them. Um, food service, so that's your restaurants and your bars and places like that. Housing, and that will be construction. Um, finance, bank tellers, um, information technology and communication, the energy sector, media, legal, public safety, and water and wastewater and, and public health workers. So that's the next group. So that, that too is a very, very large group. So, um, so be patient and-, and uh, Be patient because it's coming. And once we get to that group, those are gonna be fine tuned as well. And we may have to prioritize within groups like we did before to make sure that you know those most at risk are getting it first. Okay, I'll be patient. I'm in 1C, so I will be patient and wait my turn. I do wanna thank Urbana Mayor Diane Marlin. Thank you every week for letting us continue to do this. I wanna thank Jason Liggett and UPTV. We would not be able to do this without a place to air them. And of course, Julie Pride and her entire staff, CUPHD, thank you for everything you do to keep us safe.